Hi, welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace and today we're going to be wrapping up our arena character evaluations. Today we've got the one star characters. Guys, I think you already know, but like you don't sleep on the one star characters. A lot of the one star characters are actually freaking gods. For example, we've got Lima, whose six star variant is still a top triple S tier in JP ranking. We've got Pekka and Kokoro, Yui 6, they're all freaking good. Kiaru 6 is hella good as well, but like, you know, their times will come. And we've got characters that are actually good now, so so let's jump into it. So let's start with Kiaru, and like, the first thing you notice is that she can get really strong really fast because she's from Dungeon Queens, right? And if you're going to be getting some Kiaru, you might as well star up Kiaru as well because they actually share bond levels. What this means is that if you level your Kiaru's bond level to 8 and you get all of those bond level bonuses, those bond level bonuses are actually also applied to summer Kiaru and vice versa. So more about Kiaru's utility. So she actually has an AoE magic UB, which is good. It's decent. The ratios on it are okay, but let's have a look at the rest of her kit, right? So she's also got a dual defense down, which isn't really that common. And to be honest, it's not really that good unless like you're in an early game where you're still mixing up teams. Typically what you're trying to do is find synergies, right? But if you're having a dual defense down, you're not going to be like putting physical and magical attackers together, right? Because you're going to try and like match the physical defense downs with the physical attackers and the magical defense downs with the magical attackers attackers, stuff like that, right? So that they can do more damage overall. The dual defense down just isn't that great, but like, you know, it's, it's you, sometimes you gotta, you gotta make do with what you have. On the other hand, she has a pretty strong single target S1, I think, and it could be actually one of the answers to Miyako. As you guys can tell, like, I'm looking for a lot of Miyako killers. Kyaru is potentially one of them. And to be honest, Miyako is one of those characters that stops most people from climbing, simply because they don't know how to deal with it. And honestly, the answer is actually pretty simple. It's just that, like, everyone shits on, like, the mages. The current single target options, that is. And, uh, that you know, they're not that good, but you're going to be stagnating at like that rank. So you just invest. Next, we've got Lima and Lima is, she's got a pretty quirky utility. For me, Lima's best utility is the fact that her S1, when she comes to the battle late, what this does is it actually equalizes the playing grounds for both the attacking and defending team. So just to remind you guys, attacking defending is not made equal. Defenders actually get a one frame bonus. So anything that happens, if it's like a mirror team, the defenders will get it first. What Lima does is her S1 actually forces both teams to actually start at the same time. From a calculation point of view, she's actually like a great reset. There's also a really strong point about her like grouping up enemies. Honestly, I mean, I'd, I'd be ecstatic if this was true, but like I've, I've yet to actually seen any like actual empirical evidence that this actually happens. Like I've drawn circles and stuff like and taken screenshots, tried to count frames to see if it really does make a difference. Like if it really does group the enemies together. And honestly, I don't think it does, but like don't, don't crucify me for it. But like, please, you know, if you do have any evidence of it, let me know and let me see it. I just hear it a lot. And honestly, it looks the same to me. Otherwise, she's got great utility in her pretty frequent stun. It's an auto stun, auto stun, and it goes on forever. But for me personally, I find that she dies pretty fast. Otherwise, she's a great tank. And like I said, she's still very meta right now. Next, we've got Pekka and she's a decent tank, but like for some reason, I always talk about this and like, you know, trash on her for her, but like she has a bunch of attacks. And I don't really like that, right? Because like, if you guys have watched my tank videos, I don't really like attacks on tanks. I like more damage mitigation. What are tanks known for? They are known for surviving and like actually staying there and, and being that wall between your team and their team. What she does have is like an increase to her max HP, as well as a lot more max HP from like her bond level bonus. And the reason this is good is because this is actually a counter to true damage. So if you can't block true damage by using defense, what you can do is actually increase your max HP. And this is just a common tactic in most games to fight against true damage or any damage that goes through armor. Otherwise, she's just a very solid tank, just like lacking in a couple of features. Kokoro, I'm a big, big fan of Kokoro. She's just such a great support all around. She gives you action speed boosts, gives you physical and magical attack buffs. And she also periodically offloads some of the damage that your tank is taking because she is using her tri slash to move forward to the front, takes a bit of damage, goes back into the back line, and then she heals herself with a UB. Like honestly, I reckon she is like the second best offensive like general support in arena behind Monica. And what I mean by that is that she can actually be slapped into like any team and it will just make that team better. As opposed to Saren, who you kind of need to like plan out, right? Yui, like same deal from Chico for Yui. Like healers just aren't that great, but she actually, for me, she was a low key Miyako killer at the start of the game. She has a skill where she does a single target magic attack and like, you know, at the lower echelons, it did kind of work, but it, it doesn't work when you get up higher. She also does give like an AOE pistol good defense buff. You can't fault that. That's pretty good. But like she usually gets taken out by like a Tamaki before she can UB. And by the time she gets taken out by Tamaki, she typically hasn't been able to kill the Miyako either. Unfortunately, in this meta, she just gets like kind of cucked real fast. And like, you know, sometimes you do see her in the stall comps, but like then again, Arena is just a bit too fast for like healing characters because like most people just freaking die. Hiromi is a really interesting one. So she's got like utility in the form of two stuns, one on the UB and one on the S2. So she actually does have a decent
excellent physical and damage mitigation skill for her allies, but she's not exactly a traditional tank because she's sitting behind a lot of the frontal units. What this does mean is that she's actually exposing like the Makoto or the Karu. Okay, Karu's are like always exposed anyway, but like I think you get what I mean. However, she does have like a similar surprise factor to Akino. So like most people aren't familiar with Kurumi and what tends to happen is that they'll just think that Kurumi is another DPS. What they don't realize is that Kurumi is actually another wall that they have to break through and they might not bring enough DPS to break through that second wall. And then boom, you either get stored out or like your team starts losing because you've lost your only tank when they've still got a Kurumi. Otherwise, she's got some great disruption and pretty decent survivability. I think she's also got max HP up. She is, she's pretty solid. I've definitely seen quite a fair few Kurumis, but like not too much anymore. Next to Aoi, she is a pretty decent attacker. She's got AoE physical damage to the front with the UB and some poison on her S1 for that sweet damage to the tank that has a lot of armor. Also some nice utility on her S2 where she paralyzes for like 2.25 seconds, but like I just think that the skill set doesn't really fit with the meta right now, especially with like things exploding left and right. You got like Tamaki going in and nuking one and you got like Hatsune going in and nuking another one. Like it's it's a bit crazy and I'm not sure like in this meta right now, this kit is really appropriate. As with all the other characters we talk about today, you know, you can kind of make everyone work like at, at some level. You just kind of need to know like what for, right? So again, Aoi, Poison, Defense Bane's tanks. Next we've got Misaki, who I actually saw a lot in the early stages of the game. AoE magic damage, S1 reduces action speed of target by 20%, but it's only for the frontmost enemy. Like, you know, it's pretty good. But unfortunately having that hit like the tank is just not that valuable. Of course, what this means is that like, you know, the enemy Miyako, oh my God, I keep trying to kill Miyakos. The Miyako might be getting her skills off later, which might give you more opportunity to actually kill her. But typically you want strong single target magic damage to actually kill the Miyakos and then mow the rest down with other damages. Suzume is kind of like Misaki where she's got like AoE magic damage as well, but she also has a weird quirky one where she has RNG physical defense debuff. It's kind of like, okay, well, I'm going to hit you with my UB and you might get, you know, a little bit of defense debuff or you might get a lot of physical defense debuff. Otherwise, she just does some magic damage to the front line, kind of similar to Misaki. It's just, it's just not really how it goes right now. She also does have a built-in heal, which is nice, you know, at kind of like a supporting kind of capability, but like you're probably going to be looking for a character that kind of brings more to the table than Suzume. But Hiyori, Hiyori is a pretty funny one because I always get surprised by her. So she's got a lot of physical damage and that should be screaming tank buster. However, what's funny is that her UB actually catches like bunch of the like frontline attackers. So like I typically don't use Hiyori to attack. Usually some people have Hiyori to defend and like my Makoto or my Tamaki, like they get caught in the fire when Hiyori does her AOE UB and then they just die and then I get outstalled or something. But yeah, otherwise like her primary utility as an attacker is probably just tank busting. Or if you want to kill that Makoto on position too, like other people did to me, you could try that too. Rei is okay, but like I really don't like her dependence on her counter. You got a whole skill that's dedicated to the counter and it's just like a lot of the time, especially in a game where you can't activate the skills when you want, like it just, it's really hard to make it work. Aside from that, she just does like straightforward physical damage. So, you know, she could just join you like as you go tank busting. I personally think there are better units to take, but if you've like start up your Rei because she ha does have two nodes, you could definitely consider taking her. Next we've got Yori and her archetype is pretty similar to like Suzume and Misa. She's got like, you know, the magical AOE damage to the frontline kind of thing. But what Yori has that the others don't is that she has a large increase to her damage at the cost of HP. A large increase. I'm not even sure like any characters right now have a large increase to magical attack. And her UB, it's... <laughs> It's really, really strong. For some reason, they really, really loaded her UB with like big multipliers. So she's just doing like mass damage to the front line. Obviously, all of this combined actually gives her an edge when she go and attack those front lines. You know, that Miyako is going to be screaming. She is a good option. However, do be warned that she is a Princess Arena coin unit. That just makes it all the harder to start her up. Lastly, guys, we're almost there. We've got Misogi. And Misogi is a really funky one because she is kind of like Mimi. She does like an AoE physical damage centered around the second unit. She also also has a P2 blind, but it is weaker than Maho's because it's only at a 30% miss rate as opposed to Maho forcing you at a 60% miss rate. Lastly, she's got a targeted S2 for the highest physical attack enemy, which reduces their physical attack and boosts her own. She honestly, like my evaluation of this is that she's got a lot going on, but she doesn't really like, it's, she's not really doing any one thing really good. And especially in this arena, everyone kind of has a role, right? Like Makoto, you do the defense down. Like Shiori, you're going to be nuking down their front line. Misogi, 
she's kind of like doing this and that and you know like like if she was a support like a pure support that'd kind of be okay but then it's kind of like trying to blend in some attacks as well it's kind of like the pecker and tank why did they give her attacks when she's a tank well to be honest what i'm most disappointed with is the blind i didn't realize that all blinds weren't made equal until i found miss soggy and she only has 30 percent as opposed to yuki and maho 60 percent and honestly that is a real shame it just really like cripples the character okay guys we finally made it through all of the characters i hope you guys have not fallen asleep yet it's been a tough few videos for you guys but like you know i hope this has actually helped you guys better get hyped because next we're going to be talking about like team compositions and actually running through like some of those example battles and how to how to fight teams actually and just like some le some level of basic calculations like i'm not going to go into anything like ultra deep i will share like one of the comps that i came up with myself and how i got there but like but at some point like you get too deep and then you kind of just like it's not worth it anymore okay with that being said let's wrap it up there again guys thank you so much for watching mm, today's secret message let's go lima 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 if you guys could drop that secret message down in the comments below i would really appreciate it tells me that you've watched the video to the end and i like that it just makes me feel like my hard work is appreciated all right guys i'm not going to take up any more of your time but again thank you so much for watching like subscribe comment you already know the works and i will catch you guys in the next video bye bye